Ooh. Isn't that amazing? Oh, that's really good. Like, we're going to eat all these before they go in the freezer. <laughs> Good morning, beautiful people. It is a glorious spring day, but I have stuff I have to do inside today. So maybe I'll go out later in the sunshine. At the moment, I've got things to do, like I said. So first to start out, I am actually going to get some corned beef brining um, in solution because St. Patrick's Day is next week and we like to have corned beef. And I've been doing, I've been brining our own corned beef for probably like three years now. And it's so good and it tastes fresher than just the packaged stuff from the store which is you know full of preservatives and I mean it is what it is so I've been doing our own and it's quite good <laughs> it's pretty simple it's just a pretty basic brine water salt sugar and some aromatics um bay leaf thyme that kind of thing so I'm gonna get that going I gotta bring this up to a simmer a little bit to get all the sugar and salt melted and then I actually do half of the water that the recipe calls for and put the rest of the half in as ice. So it like super cools it pretty fast and then I can get my beef in there pretty quickly. I am using the recipe, the corned beef recipe from the River Cottage Meat Book. I've been using it this whole time, all these years, and I really enjoy it. It's very good, pretty consistent, and just makes a really good product. I also use the same brine for um, pickled tongues. Also very good <laughs> in its own way, but today we're doing the corned beef. And then after this, I need to preserve all that char that we harvested yesterday in the greenhouse. So that's the plan for today. Those two things for sure. We'll see if we get anything else done, but let's get this uh, this corned beef going. Alrighty, this recipe calls for five quarts of water, but like I said, I only do half the water as water, and then I throw the rest in as ice. So I'm gonna do two quarts of water right now, and then I will do three quarts um, in ice once everything's all you know melted in together so I can cool off that brain. All right, now I need a pound of sugar. So we're gonna, gonna weigh this out. This no, you're not gonna eat the sugar, <laughs> little bug. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna weigh a measuring cup, a one cup measuring cup, and we'll see how much one cup is. All right, that is about a half pound, so cool. Two of these. All right, now we're gonna do it again for salt. All right, that's also about half a pound, and I need three pounds of salt, so we're gonna do six of these. All right, once I get my sugar and my salt weighed out, I don't really worry about weighing anything else, um, just because it's all like flavoring at that point. So I'm gonna put some bay leaves in, some peppercorns, some thyme, and that's probably about it. So one thing you'll notice is it's actually very, very um, cloudy. And because I didn't put as much water in there, it's not going to dissolve quite as well because the salinity is like way high, but that's okay. I'm really just wanting things to mostly get dissolved. And then as I add the ice water, that will help a little bit, but we'll be okay here. And we'll just get this ready to go for our beef. Some bay leaves. That's four peppercorns. I'm gonna add some cloves too, so just a couple of whole cloves to get in here. Season it up. It was like five. I'm gonna let this come up almost to a simmer to melt this, the sugar and the salt, but also to um, help everything steep together as the heat helps everything like release its aromatic qualities. So we will let it steep together for a little bit um, as it's warm. And then after it's been sitting for, I don't know, probably 30 minutes or so, maybe an hour, um, I'll add the ice and the beef. All right, while we're waiting for that to heat up and do its thing, I wanted to give you guys a heads up for a bit of a schedule change in our posting schedule. Um, we're gonna be going down to two days a week, most likely Tuesday and Thursday, for a couple reasons. <laughs> One, even though we still have probably about like two months or so until this baby shows up, I do have things that I want and need to do to prep for baby, and um, editing takes a lot of time for me. It takes about four hours a day, so when we're posting like daily for four or five videos a week, 
that takes a lot of my time and to be honest I'm like also running out of energy like easily these days so part of the reason we decided to go down to two days a week is to kind of lighten my load a little bit so I can get done the things that I need to get done and also get the rest that I need to you know prepare for this baby and and all the the birthing and new baby stuff that goes along with it the second reason is Ben needs to just keep his head in the game for this building project and trying to film it and like vlog it at the same time has been really difficult so he was like you know what it would be super easy if I could just like film but not have to worry about making a video video sorry if you see the weird thing on my arm I burned it he's going to back off a little bit on his filming as well two videos a week is a lot easier for us. We probably also won't be doing weekly build updates, mostly because it's been a really wet spring and it has been raining a ton and we have gotten like rained out almost every other day for two weeks. And if it wasn't raining, then it's been super, super muddy. So we're just kind of trying to play catch up and we figured, you know what? We're not gonna guarantee a weekly video. It'll be, you know, as, as they're available and or we might just save it all up to do like one big reveal video at the end so um we are still filming it the process and everything that's going but we we can't promise and don't want to promise weekly or consistent updates because we can't control the weather and it just is what it is and he's just he's really trying to focus and stay stay the course so just a heads up like i said two videos a week um just because when we don't post on our regular schedule we do get very concerned messages like everything is okay everything's fine we just want to let you guys know schedule change for multiple reasons we just decided this season of life that we're in and we're preparing to go into with a new baby is just a little bit better if we can just like kind of back off and chill a little bit and uh you know get our heads right while we while we prepare for this new little one to come Alrighty, this is pretty warm now you can see it's changed color a lot. All the sugar is melted. Most of the salt is melted. Um, not all of it will melt because like I said, the salt to water ratio is really high. But as we add the ice cubes later, that will, it'll all even out. So I'm going to let this sit and steep for a little while and let all the flavors kind of mellow together before we add the ice. And then, then we will add the ice and then we'll add the beef. <laughs> Alrighty, this has been steeping for, it's probably been about an hour. I got busy doing stuff and that's fine. So it's uh, ready to go. We're gonna add some ice in here. So because I did the two quarts water, I'm gonna do the three quarts ice to bring it up to the five quarts that I need. That just happens to be the ratio for the salt and all that. So, and then I'm gonna put this brisket in it and then we are going to put a lid on it and put it in the fridge for about a week. That's how long it's gonna take to brine. It's not a super, super thick brisket but a week should be good enough to get it all flavorful and good and then when it comes time to eat it i will remove it from the fridge from the brine rinse it probably and then um just slowly cook it boil it for a couple hours until it's tender and falls apart and we eat it with cabbage and potatoes and mustard and all that good stuff when... if you're not putting ice in it <clears throat> and you're just starting with the whole five quarts. Um, I would for sure let this cool to at least room temperature or probably pop it in the fridge to cool off because you don't wanna put, you know, cold raw meat into hot or warm brine because it'll like par cook it and that's not any kind of tasty. Alrighty, this is a just about six pound brisket. This is actually not Bubbles brisket. This is one from a local farm. Um, that I've had in my freezer that we need to use up. And I was like, you know what? I think I'm gonna save biscuits brisket for either just brisket or maybe like pastrami or something. So, which is very similar to corned beef. Now I'm getting this, oh, that's really cool. Getting this in here submerged so that nothing's sticking out. And like I said, we're gonna pop a lid on this and stick it in the fridge for a week. Alrighty, let's preserve some chard. It is actually the next day. We had a mild toddler meltdown yesterday and she just needed <laughs> she just needed me the rest of the afternoon. So it's okay. We snuggled and ate some snacks and we were good. It was a good day. But now I still need to do this chard. So I have my tub of chard that we harvested from the greenhouse. So I'm gonna get these washed up and I am going off the instructions from Crystal from the Whole Fed Homesteads book. 
um, Freeze Fresh. This is a great book, actually. She covers like just about every fruit and vegetable you could possibly want. And she covers not only just preserving it, period, by itself, but she also has a ton of recipes for either making up the recipe and then freezing it so you can eat it later, or how to use your frozen fruits and veggies in various recipes. Um, she just kind of covers everything, and it's a beautiful book. So I'm using the greens section for what we're doing today. I'm going to steam them in, um, I have both my steamer things going. So I have the steamer basket, which you guys have seen, and then I have a, that steamer basket is actually from my grandmother, who's no longer with us. My, my paternal grandmother and it's very sentimental to me. <laughs> it's like, it doesn't have the, you know, the little ring to pull it out or anything. And it's kind of falling apart and I've had to fix, or Ben's had to fix uh, legs and stuff, but it's still hanging on. We're still doing it. So I've got that in here for this one. We are going to double up just so it takes a little bit less time. Um, so what I'm gonna do is wash these and then I'm gonna rough chop them so they're already chopped and then we'll put them into the steamer and they steam for about three minutes or so. And then they're gonna go onto this tray and I don't have silicone muffin tins. I have regular muffin tins. I just don't wanna pack them in there and deal with that. So what I'm gonna do is just make like little nests or balls on the, the cookie sheet and pop that into the freezer. And then when they're frozen, I will pull them out and put them and bag them so that they will be in bags and ready to go whenever I feel like pulling out some greens and using them for whatever. So we're gonna get that going. My water is boiling. I'm gonna toss these greens into the sink. So Crystal's book actually suggests to um, like devein these, pull out any tough veins, but these are so tender, I don't need to worry about that. We actually ate some, um, and I just cooked it with these, the bones, we call them the bones, with the bones in, and they were, I mean, they were so tender. So I'm not gonna worry about it, and that adds some, some extra fiber, if you will. <laughs> so we're just gonna keep that. Alrighty, these are steaming. Steamy, steamy. steamy. You can kind of see it was steaming. Uh, and I've got half my greens chopped, so I'm gonna get these in here in batches, set a timer real quick, toss them about halfway through, and then we'll pull them out and put, ooh, that's good and steep. Pull them out and put them on the tray. <laughs> I don't wanna overcrowd this. Just want enough space in there to be able to move around. So all that good. I probably should put a liner in this because these greens are probably gonna uh, color this basket, but oh well, it'll be all right. Ooh, hot, hot. I'll set a timer for, I'm gonna set it for two minutes because I don't have increments on my stove timer, so I'll set it for two minutes and then we'll give them a toss, and then we'll set it for another minute, and then we'll pull them out. Okie dokie. Toss. Hot. All right, just giving these a toss to make sure the steam gets, you know, in every little nook and cranny to every little green. That's really hot. And so pretty once they've been steamed. They just have that, I am mean, like they're already vibrant when you put them in obviously, but if you steam them, they just get like more vibrant and beautiful. Alrighty. Okay, I'm just gonna kind of spread these on the cookie sheet for now, just so they can cool off a little bit. And then I will make my little nests or pucks or whatever you want to call it. Look at those beautiful greens. You're doing boiled versus steamed? No, just steamed. These are, they're all steamed. Ah. I have the little steamer basket ah. on that one. Yeah, I cannot believe how good these smell. <laughs> I just want to eat these. Good? Mm-hmm. Wow. Those that are actually kind of so sweet. Fresh. Those taste really good. They do. Yes. Eat some. Mm. I like 
They don't even need salt. I'm gonna put some salt on it. Because those are really good. Oh my gosh. That's amazing. I'm gonna have to get these in the freezer before I eat them. <laughs> mm hmm. Mm. Oh my gosh, I can seriously just eat these with a fork. Okay, let's keep going before we eat them all. You want to come eat these with some salt. Like, eat them plain. Just taste it. And then sprinkle a tiny bit of salt on there. Mm, tastes like spinach. I know, isn't that good? Like, it's gonna blow your mind. Ooh. Isn't that amazing? Oh, that's really good. Like, we're salt. gonna eat all these before they go in the freezer. <laughs> they're really good. <laughs> They're so fresh and springy. Like I can tell we've come through the winter mm -hmm. with not we're, a lot of greens. We're ready for greens. So ready for greens. Let's try it with the saltier salt. That's a lot of salt. Well then I guess I need more green. I guess you do. Like these are just steamed. There's nothing, there's no butter, no nothing, no garlic. Those it's just have so steamed. much flavor. They're amazing. Mm -hmm. So good. I yeah, kind of wish I'd collected more actually. <laughs> but here yeah, we, go. we, uh, That's we right. fed a lot to the chickens and we the pigs. Did. That's okay. That's okay. Because I was like, gosh, this is a lot. I can't process all of this. This is so much. Just like, I don't have the energy right now. But, I could do a little bit. And then that whole thing. Like, yeah, it condensed to this is one tray. What is this, like two meals maybe? Yeah, probably. If you stretch it? If I stretch it, yeah. I mean, it's a couple meals for just me. If I eat it by myself. But I'm having help. <laughs> you could put this in lasagna. Yeah, totally. Yeah, so I usually do spinach in our lasagna. And um, I don't usually do chard because chard typically is really chardy, like really strong. But this is so, I don't know if it's because it's the perpetual chard. It's not like a, a true like silver beet chard or if it's because it's so tender, because it's so like new and fresh, but this is amazing and I want to eat it and everything actually. Mm. Like toss that with some mm -hmm. pasta and some yeah. chicken. Mm -hmm. oh. mm. So that was, good. That's some good stuff. Okay, before we eat it all, <laughs> I am going to make little, little nests, little pucks with these and then get them into the freezer after I maybe set some aside to eat it later with dinner or lunch by myself. <laughs> You like it with salt on it? Yeah. I think everybody likes it with salt on it. So we're gonna save some of this for dinner because yum. A little bit. A little bit. Is they good? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Alrighty. Not a ton to put in the freezer, but it's all right. It's a little bit. This will give us a couple extra meals, and then I'm planning to plant more chard soon. So we will have more coming. <laughs> I'm gonna pop these into the freezer until they are frozen solid. And either tonight or tomorrow, I'll pull them out and bag them. So they're in individual bags, not individual bags, but like together in a bag. And then I can pull them out when I need them. Alrighty, there you go, preserved chard. That we didn't eat. There's a lot of it, but we're gonna eat. <laughs> Instead of preserving it, that wasn't as much to put in the freezer as I thought there would be, but it's all right. So that is the end of that. The chard is done. Like I said, I'll be planting more soon because that's really, really good, and I love that, and I need more of that in my life. Like I said, I got the instructions for that out of Crystal's book, Freeze Fresh. I'll pop a link for that uh, for that book for you guys below. It's a great little book. Um, very simple one to tef definitely have on hand for your preserving season and that's a wrap. We'll catch you guys in the next one.